ChatGPT is firing back at DeepSeek, and you know what you do when you're a product team, and these are hard models to build, and you can't just magically build another model or change everything all in a dime. You respond with the thing you originally planned, but you position it a little differently. And they originally planned, OpenAI did, to release O3 Mini at the end of this month. The heavy, heavy, heavy rumor is that it is today. If they follow their usual practice, it will be at 10 a.m. Pacific in about four and a half hours. And if they do that, you will see that O3 Mini is going to be positioned versus DeepSeek. They probably won't name DeepSeek on the call, but it will be positioned as an amazing option even for free users. They've changed that. It was going to be available for plus users on a very limited basis, but DeepSeek has upended the value chain with their free tier. And so they're going to push that reasoning model down and even free tier users are going to get it. This is a model that is supposed to be better than O1. So if we're right, if what Sam Altman has literally said is true, then free tier users will have access to a better, faster model with a hundred messages a day and they still won't have a one. I don't know. This is why they need to get their business model and their pricing and packaging figured out because this is a mess. But the point is they're nervous enough to change the availability for O3 mini. They know they're going to burn some cash as people use it, but they need to get that market share back and win the mind share of people who are running to deep seek. That's kind of that strategy. At the same time, Sam has a very busy day on what's next. He is in Washington, D.C. Uh, I don't know how he's getting there because Reagan is closed, which is really bad. Um, but he's in D.C. doing a briefing, and the briefing is on rumor has it. And this is, this is there are rumors that I feel good about, like O3 Mini coming out in the next day or so. And there are rumors that I'm like, this is extremely sketchy, but like there's probably some information in here somewhere. This is in that latter category. It's extremely sketchy, but there's probably some information in here somewhere. The rumor is that it is not O3 that he's in town to talk about. That's too close to production. It's something farther out, but within the first half of the year. O4 uh, has been bandied around uh, by some of the rumor vultures. That might be it. The point is that he feels like it has enough national security implications, which means, Reed, it's really, really good, that it's worth going to Washington to talk about. One other tidbit on O3. Again, these guys cannot name their models for the life of them. Could you tell me the difference between O3 Mini and O3? I would assume O3 Mini is smaller as a model, but that doesn't explain why it's faster automatically. Anyway, O3 Mini is fast. O3 Mini is smarter than O1, apparently. Um, and O3 was tested as part of the new International AI Safety Report. And the results are just bonkers. The test results got submitted and it's O O one has changed the game in the fall. I know it seems a long way away and there are people who are like, Oh, R one is better than O one, which for the record, I've played with them both. I don't think it is. Um, but whether, even if you believe that O three is just bonkers good in the test results and it's, it's not O three many they've, got to pick a different name or something. They won't, but they, they ought to. When we get our hands on that, it looks like it's a model that is going to be better than all but the top few experts in the world at a wide range of fields. And even O1 Pro isn't testing as well. It's, it's just remarkable. Like I'm really excited for O3 and O3 Pro. So we will see. That is down the road. As far as I know, they're not releasing O3 and O3 Pro today. I believe it is only O3 Mini because O3 Mini is a smaller model. It's easier to complete safety training. And yes, it is a smaller model. And that is, that is one of those things that I wish that they would think about less, to be honest with you. Because from a consumer perspective, I don't care how much imaginary space your model takes up. What I care about is the capabilities of the model. What, what can it actually do for me? What can it do now that it couldn't do before? And we have done a terrible job explaining to people how that works. I actually wrote up a sub stack. It's free on the, um, 
on the Substack talking about how we don't understand the evals and the acronyms like IMA and uh, GPQA and like I did like what are these tests? You have this little like did this and this on the GPQA diamond test and I'm like what well, what does that mean? So I went and looked at the tests and I screenshotted them and I wrote about them and I kind of went through all of them. I even looked at Humanity's last exam which just came out. I think it's worth taking a look at because we need to understand as humans how we're measuring these things and understand how we're not measuring them. Like if I looked at it and I did, there's a lot of math. There's some real world coding. There's some literature stuff on humanity's last exam, which they do the worst on. But by and large, we have no tests for the things we tend to use AI for every day. And I think there is a gap there and I don't know how to fix it. But I think that if we had a test that was more understandable to people, it might help them figure out what AI can do and how AI performance differences are meaningful. So something to think about. I don't think we've solved that one, but I think it's part of the problem. It's part of why people don't understand what AI does. And when a new model like Deep, Deep Sea comes along, they're like, what is this? This is amazing. Or this is terrible, but it's mostly like, their priors, their prior assumptions shaping that rather than just sort of rigorously thinking about what it can do.